Okay, so in this video we're going to go through how to pay and adjust sales tax. So first of all, uh, where do you find your sales tax information? We go up to vendors here and we have sales tax. So they do have a quick manage sales tax which kind of covers all of these areas, right? It's just another place to see the same stuff. <laughs> um, but we do have the ability to pay our sales tax and adjust sales tax in here. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want, I want to run my sales tax liability report. Okay. So the sales tax liability report, again, is going to default, right? So I have it set up that I pay tax monthly. So it's looking at last month because generally what happens, right, is that we pay sales tax in the middle to end of the month following, right, when we collect it. Okay. I can also see here on the report that I, I run my tax basis on an accrual basis, right? So this report tells me that here as well. Now coming down and reading the report, what this is telling me is that accounting firm is actually a vendor and state comptroller is another vendor set up. So when I'm cutting my checks to different vendors, it breaks it up that way first. And then once it's within that vendor, it breaks it up by the locality, right? So I owe Dallas, I owe Austin, etc. Okay, and that all happens at the item level when you set it up. Then it's going to tell me my total sales, my non-taxable sales, since a lot of times on our sales tax returns, we do have to report what is non-taxable. Our taxable sales, by locality again, tax collected, and then tax due. Right, so when we're cutting our checks, we're going to show here, right, we're going to cut a check for $59 and $176. Now down below, there is an area here that has no tax vendor and other. Now if we're running sales tax appropriately, we should never see this, okay? This is happening because I just turned sales tax on in this file, and this is for everything prior to when I turn sales tax on. <laughs> but you should never see a no tax vendor or an other any amounts in there. Okay, so you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. If it is, give us a call. We can take a look at why that's happening and help you get it cleaned up. All right. Now, another thing to note is that we have sales tax payable here. Okay, that probably or it definitely should not tie out to what is showing up as of today in your sales tax payable account, right? Because this report is looking at as of November 30th, so as of last month. This right here is as of today or as of all time. Even if you have some transactions dated in the future, it'll pick that up here. All right, so if those balances are off, that's why. You want to pay it as of the report date. All right, so let's say we're going to go ahead and pay Dallas. So I come up here and I say I'm going to pay my sales tax. You choose which account you're paying from, okay, and you can set a default account, of course, in your preferences. The check date, right, again, show sales tax through date, so it's matching my report right now. If I said show me sales tax through the end of December, those numbers would change. Right now it shows that 414 that we had, we showed up, or we had on the uh, chart of accounts. The starting check number, okay, so what's our check number that we're going to be paying? And then you select off which you're going to pay. And then you can mark these to be printed. So again, if you print your checks and send them in, if you do it through EFT, you wouldn't mark it to be printed. Okay, and the check number probably would be EFT and the date. All right, so again, if I check this off, I'm going to pay 5906. So if I was short paying for whatever reason, so let's say they give us a 1% discount for paying on time, right? Some of some states do that for paying on time. Isn't that so nice of them? <laughs> it'd be uh, it'd be funny if they gave us a 1% a for paying early, but you know, good for them for being proactive and letting us pay on time and still get a benefit. Okay, so let's say that 5906 we get, I'm just going to pretend that we get 1% off. I'm going to say it's a dollar just for now. So in here, we don't want to just leave it that we're paying 5806, right? I don't want to just change that amount because what it's going to do is it's going to leave that dollar in here to still pay at a future date. Okay, so instead I want to go in and adjust my sales tax payable. All right, so I choose my adjustment date. Usually this should be the date, you know, a current date in the current period if you've already closed the prior month. So again, I'm going to say today, this is a sample file. Uh, the entry number, 
the class, you can associate it with a, a particular department if you need to, which sales tax vendor I'm adjusting. So again, I'm adjusting accounting firm. The adjustment account. So generally, generally this is some kind of other income account, right, for sales tax, uh, early payments or something like that. So make sure you choose the appropriate account. If this is a very immaterial amount, uh, it's fine to stick it up into the expenses area, right? Because you don't need to have it down in other income if it's a dollar every month. You don't need to have a separate account for that on your chart of accounts. So you want to choose an adjustment account. Again, I'm just going to stick it there. Now you have to say, how are we adjusting it? So are we increasing what is due or are we reducing what is due? So we're going to reduce it by a dollar. And in the memo, we can say sales tax adjustment, early pay, or pay on time discount or whatever it is. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. All right, so now we made that adjustment, right, for, for accounting firm. So I can come in here and I select off both of those because I'm paying accounting firm here and now it only picks up my 58.06, but it'll take care of the entire 59.06. So when I mark this as paid, right, then I don't have that additional tax payment to be made anymore because I've already made that payment, okay? Now on this report here, it's still going to show sales tax payable as of 1130, right? Because I still owed 5906 as of 1130. But if I look at it now as of the end of the following month, okay, so I owed, you know, 56, 5906 was collected, but I don't owe any money now as of the following month because that money has already been paid, right? And I didn't collect any additional money for Dallas in the month of December. So again, you want to pay attention to those dates. Whoops. You want to pay attention to those dates because as of, this is this report is saying as of the end of November, I still owed this money and I didn't pay it until December. So it's still going to show up here on here as money owed. But that's the nice thing about coming in here and actually paying sales tax through the system because in my system here, it keeps track for me. It says it doesn't show that I owe Dallas any money because I've already actually paid it. And now I can just come in and play Austin. Okay. All right. So that is how to pay and how to adjust your sales tax.